Donald Trump joined one of the world's most popular podcasters, Joe Rogan, for a three-hour conversation over the weekend. Trump's campaign was hoping to court the show's large young male audience. The two talked about everything from life on Mars to Trump's false claims on election fraud, where Joe Rogan seemed to push back. Let's watch. Because you said over and over again that you were robbed in 2020. Yeah, totally. What, how do you think you were robbed? Everybody always cuts you off. I'm going to allow... Do. Well, they not only cut you off. Well, what I'd rather do is we'll do it another time. And I would bring in papers that you would not believe. So many different papers. That election was so crooked. It was the most crooked election. Okay, but give me some examples of how. Well, let's start. Let's start okay. on the top and the easy ones. Okay. They were supposed to get legislative approval to do the things they did, and they didn't get it. In many cases, they didn't get it. What things? Anything. Legislative they made, approval like of like for extensions of the voting, for 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 voting earlier, for this, right. all different things. By law, they had to get legislative approvals. You don't have to go any further than that. If you take a look at Wisconsin, uh, they virtually admitted that the election was rigged, robbed, and stolen. They wouldn't give access in certain areas to the ballots because the ballots weren't signed. They weren't originals. They were... We could go into this stuff. We could go into the ballots, or we could go into the overall. I'll give you another one. Are you going to present well, well, this let me, ever? Uh, like, what, do you do you think? Like, let me a, just give you one okay, more go ahead. before. The two also talked about how bad the mainstream media has treated him. Let's watch. You just assume because people loved you on The Apprentice, they were going to love you as a well, president. I think it would be so easy. You know, it's <laughs> well, very it probably would have been if the media didn't attack you the way they did. If they didn't conflate you with Hitler. I mean, even today, like Kamala was talking about you and Hitler. You're, they're going to take what you said about Robert E. Lee. Oh, Donald Trump oh, wishes the South Robert won. E. That's yeah. right. He loves Robert they, E. Lee. They love to take things out of context and yeah. distort things. But well, they, they don't even have to take them out. They make them up entirely. Okay, They, they do make that them. too. But, you know, it's interesting when you mentioned the uh, – the, I was very popular. And uh, and all those people loved me. I mean, this uh, some of these, these women, they're so – they're so stupid. And uh, Joy, she would, every time she'd see me, I, like I'd be in the theater or something, and she'd, you have to be on the show again. Come on, come on, let's go. We have she to loved you. Trump also asked Rogan about his thoughts on J.D. Vance, while Rogan shared some insight as to why he had Trump on the podcast. I appreciate J.D. Vance saying that. And by the way, I think he was a great pick. Do you like J.D. as a I pick? like him a lot. Yeah, You're allowed to say that. As no, I do. I like him no, a lot. I think, he's I, I think he's a brilliant guy. And I think his ability to talk like a normal human being. He did. You did my friend Theo Vaughn's podcast. Right. And he just did it. How did he do he with it? He did great. And it, it, he just talks like a normal human being. Is that why you called me to do this? No, no. <laughs> we were gonna, I was, uh, he, was, I, he was a nice once guy. Once they shot you, I was like, he's got to come in here. It's all about timing. It's all about the timing. The timing's I think good. Our timing's perfect. Do you even have a scar in your ear? You got anything on there? I do. What do we say? What do we say? What do you got so, there? So, right over here. Oh, it's I a tiny little mark. It well, there you have it. Uh, 33 million views on this podcast, which I think is the most viewed Joe Rogan podcast ever, which says a lot because he does have a lot of subscribers. Um, look, I listened to the whole thing over the weekend. And Last weekend, your whole weekend. 1.5 times speed, but... Uh, <laughs> Well, look, I thought it was enjoyable. There were a lot of very personal moments, a lot of human moments. Uh, one of my favorites was when Trump was talking about this, uh, this trip he did to Afghanistan on Air Force One in the dead of the night and how they had all the lights off on the plane, all the lights off on the runway, and how he decided to go up in the cockpit and stand next to the pilot because of how really harrowing and kind of bizarre it is to do a blind landing of, of this nature. And it was nice to hear him talk about things that weren't explicitly political and just sort of his experiences being in the White House, going into the Lincoln bedroom for the first time and kind of being in awe of all of the history that was in that building. I thought it was really smart for him to do this and kind of show this human side of him. I think it's something similar to what he did during this McDonald's appearance where he was serving up the fries, just to kind of show the other side of him of just interacting with people and kind of just being a normal person. I mean, it was three hours, so I hope there was some normalcy that came out of him. Uh, my favorite part was actually this little clip where Joe Rogan was making fun of the weave and saying, this is, you, this is one big weave now. You're really going off on tangents. <laughs> um, but, I mean, the reality, it was just like 
fact checkers were in full force on this one. I mean, I'm sure they were. He was uh, there. I mean, CNN has a running fact check, and it's like dozens and dozens at this point. Everything from California electricity to China and Taiwan to that he eliminated ISIS when you know the ISIS caliphate was liberated two years prior to his presidency. Of course, election denial, and that's actually I think what was the most fascinating was to see how Joe Rogan did push back for quite a long time. It was a long part of the interview where he pushed back, asking for evidence, asking for more information. I mean, I wish Joe Rogan would have been a little bit more clear. Joe Rogan also said on his his later podcast with his uh, co-host that he regrets not asking Donald Trump as to why he uh, was so resistant when it came to accepting COVID um, and the vaccine. And I that would have been nice for him to say to his large platform is to challenge him on on his vaccine response, especially given how Donald Trump was handing out the vaccine to Vladimir Putin. Um, at the same time, he was trying to was resisting handing it out to Americans and challenging, you know, COVID at first. Uh, so, you know, the, the polling, he was all over the place with his polling estimates, saying he was down by astronomical numbers uh, in Wisconsin. And turns out he wasn't as, as low as he said. Of course, there's the outcome of the election. I think that's the biggest, the big lie that went on forever. And, um, and it wasn't really, I mean, you'd think that <laughs> after making these claims over and over again, uh, for years, that he would have a more solid response to a pretty, you know, light interview, and the same with the enemy with from within. You know, JD Vance, which we'll talk about, was out the same day saying that Donald Trump didn't say that, but there was Donald Trump in this interview with Joe Rogan, uh, talking about the enemy of within being Adam Schiff and Nancy Pelosi on the other side, and that he would go after them with the military. I mean, it's just it must get old being a surrogate for Donald Trump in trying to rewrite the words that he continues to say, even after <laughs> they rewrite it again. Well, he did not say to send the military on Pelosi and Schiff and uh, et cetera. That was a different set of comments that he made. But um, I, I, I'm a little confused by your characterization of what Joe Rogan might have asked jo uh, Donald Trump about COVID, because it would actually be from the opposite perspective. Said this. That if you could find the quote, that would be great, because Joe Rogan was notoriously a lot softer on COVID than Trump was, especially in the first six months to, uh, of the pandemic response, and was very skeptical about the vaccines and the emergency use authorization. Um, Rogan revealed, okay, so he was asked by another guest, uh, Brendan Schaub, mm -hmm. um, a USC fighter, did you ask him why he was against vaccines? And then Rogan revealed, no, I didn't, but I also wanted to stay composed because the mom there was a moment when he brought up the polio vaccine, and I was like, oh my God. I didn't want to correct, correct him or pull up a chart showing when polio actually dropped off after the vaccine was introduced. Despite the variance, that's a rough one. When you look at the data, there's a lot to unpack, like measles and other cases, with what actually happened. I think that Rogan has pulled back, probably from some pressure. Yeah, well, I would also say that those are, that's not COVID vaccines. That's a different, obviously. They were talking about COVID, and then it shifted to polio is what he's saying. Yeah, so, because Trump obviously was very pro-COVID vaccine. He granted the emergency use authorization and Eventually. created Operation Warp Speed, right, that would have uh, allowed those to be developed in the way that they were. He was actually very proud of that. Eventually, once it became popular and there was enough pushback, but it took him long enough. I mean, he didn't even want to shut down the economy. He didn't understand the severity of He shouldn't have shut down the economy. It was a disaster. Well, that was actually, I would say, one of the biggest mistakes of his presidency was listening to people like Anthony Fauci and Deborah Birx who wanted to shut down the economy when they should have focused on protecting the most vulnerable groups as opposed to doing this blanket lockdown. And Trump absolutely was pro-vaccine from the very beginning. Again, he, he authorized Operation Warp Speed to pursue the development of them. Uh, per Congress's push. But Listen, the economy, if we didn't shut it down, it wasn't just about vulnerable members of our community in the beginning. Everybody who could get COVID had, could potentially end up in the hospital and potentially die. But the it's risk, was, a, we probably the risk we, was, was incredibly low. And we, did not, that's, we didn't know that. And then later we, when we got we a vaccine, did, the problem is vaccine the people, it lowered. But listen, if we hadn't shut it down, think of how many millions more people would have died. They wouldn't have. Would have say, that's, just, that's just not true. Johns Hopkins University did a study on this where they found that the lockdowns actually didn't save any lives. But going back to Rogan, um, I mean, I, let's talk about the fact as well that Kamala Harris has refused, or not refused, they're in conversations to do it, but it doesn't seem like she's going to do it. And my guess is it's because Joe Rogan does not agree to any terms. You go on, you do the podcast, it's three hours long. Yep. He asks whatever he wants to ask about. There's no filtering of questions, et cetera. And we have seen reporting that apparently they couldn't agree on terms. Maybe. Because, again, Joe Rogan doesn't do terms. 
I mean, do you think I mean, it's a mistake be, for her not to do the podcast? Terms could be days of the week. Terms could be times. I mean, there's a lot of things. If you're in the final week of an election, there's a lot of things that come with terms. Um, do I think it's a mistake? No. I mean, I think she should do all media, but I think that that's not her base. Just like Call Her Daddy is not Donald Trump's base, and Donald Trump should go on Call Her Daddy. I'd love to see that one. Donald Trump should go on CBS News. Donald Trump should show up at a you know a town hall. Donald Trump should talk to. He has done a lot of town halls. Well, he was he didn't he was supposed to do one and then he he canceled it. I mean, he's been canceling interviews with anybody who could issue question you know questions that are a little bit more challenging. Who is he canceled with? CBS News. Uh, he he did he cancel three, with or did they not agree to three, the interview? It was last week. He canceled three interviews the morning of and cited being exhausted and then his campaign That's cited not being true. exhausted and then nobody he said, said he wasn't. Nobody his campaign said issued a statement. It was his press saying that. He was, he was exhausted. He was exhausted. If you could find that, I'd Absolutely. love to. I'd love to see it. We covered it last week. All right, we're gonna have to leave it there. We have a lot more topics to talk about on Rising right after this.